Ciao, sono Stefano Beningheri, da tanti anni pratico il pattinaggio in linea e soprattutto lo ski to ski. Cos'è lo ski to ski? Lo ski to ski è praticamente l'utilizzo del pattino per avvicinarsi al mondo dello sci, quindi un allenamento estivo per imparare meglio la tecnica dello sci attraverso il, il pattinaggio. Eh, nella mia carriera, ho iniziato la carriera negli anni 2000, ho fatto tante gare di Line Alpine Slalom, e ho vinto un campionato europeo e la Coppa Europa nel 2005-2006 e negli anni successivi sono diventato allenatore, ho allenato anche la nazionale negli ultimi anni e ho fatto molti corsi per far diventare maestri roller eh, in Italia. Eh, mi occupo, ho uno, uno sci club che si occupa di, di questo durante l'estate le, e eh, con Riley abbiamo pensato, con Projected Production, abbiamo pensato di proporvi un percorso per imparare a pattinare e allenarsi per lo sci. Vedete che troverete una didattica che va dal facile fino al difficile, quindi dalle primi passi fino ad arrivare a fare un corto raggio su una strada in pendenza e le stesse curve che si fanno sugli sci. Mi auguro che questa idea vi piaccia e andate a scoprirla. Not all skates are suitable for skate to ski, so it's important to make a good selection. First of all, skate to ski skates should be made of plastic, with a very hard boot similar to a ski boot, and the frame should be made of aluminium, nice and rigid. It doesn't matter if the skate has three or four wheels, We'll have a look at them now and we'll try to compare them with the skis. First characteristic that a skate should have is that they should not be made of fabric because fabric is not stiff enough. And when you make turns with a fabric skate, you would lose some precision when inclining them. So a plastic boot with an aluminium frame is important. Another important factor is the quality of the skate. The best skates have the ability to change the wheels and also adjust the lateral position of the frame so you can move it and align your leg perfectly. You can make modifications, for example, on this skate, you can modify and even change the cuff and also adjust the inclination of the cuff. So, good skates have these specific features and for skate to ski, where we use a lot of inclination of the legs to make some edging movements, it's important to have a skate that is well structured. Now let's talk about the wheels. As you may or may not know, there are various types of wheel sizes. 
small and large, and skates that have either three or four wheels. I'll try and explain the difference a bit. So this is a 4 times 80 millimeter skate. The 4 times 80 millimeter skate is relatively short, meaning there is little difference between the first and last wheel, and it's low to the ground. For skiing, it is considered similar to that of a race carve slalom with a 12 to 13 meter radius. So a short and low frame means it's very dynamic. Who and what is this skate suitable for? It is definitely good for beginners and for those who want to start skating because being low provides good balance and it's very dynamic. It is used for quick movements and on flat terrain. It is not recommended for high speeds as you could start to lose some grip and some control. Let's move on to the next one, which is a three wheel skate. As you can see, I have three wheels here. The wheels are obviously much larger, going from 80 millimeters to 110 millimeters in size. With three wheels, the skate becomes slightly longer, but not by much. The height increases significantly. And what ski does this compare to? I would say that this is similar to a race carve ski with a radius of 15 meters. It is very dynamic and turns well, but there is also more stability compared to the 80 millimeter wheels. So who should use this one? We can still use this skate on flat terrain. It is not suitable for beginners because it is tall and difficult to control being so high off the ground. However, it is very dynamic and fast. So it is useful on flat terrain for doing crossovers and initial maneuvers. But you should already have some proficiency with skating. If you start going too fast, this skate could also lose grip because the frame is not so long. So on steeper roads and when trying to make wider turns or slalom cones on the steep terrain, it may start to lose grip. And finally, we have the 4 times 90 millimeter wheel, which has a slightly longer frame. The wheel size is smaller than the 110 millimeter wheel, and it is now 90 millimeters, but the frame is much longer. Let me show you the difference compared to the 3x110. If you look, you can see that the last wheel sits further forward, almost 2 centimeters. Therefore, this skate is not recommended for beginners, especially for skating on flat surfaces, as you need some speed. However, when we start going downhill and picking up some speed, it provides a lot of stability and is a lot of fun when you go fast. It can also turn well, but at low speeds it doesn't turn it so easy. When comparing to a ski, it could be considered to have a radius of around 18 or 19 meters. As you know, those wheels allow you to go fast and have stability, and once you're at speed, they turn very well and are stable. These are the three setups we used during the filming of this video. There are other types of wheels as well, but we believe these three sizes are sufficient for skate to ski, so we use these three setups. To start skate to ski, the first thing you should do is not put on the skate, but immediately buy a helmet and protective gear because otherwise a great experience could turn into a bad one. Falling with the skates at the beginning could lead to someone giving up skating altogether. Instead, let's first get the predictive gear on. Which include helmet, knee pads, elbow pads and wrist guards. These are the four pieces we always recommend for beginners. And obviously, then we go and get the skate. So let's start by putting on the protective gear. 
I usually start with the knee pads. So I'll put the knee pads on. In this case, I have knee pads that attach directly with latches. There are other types that need to be slipped on and that have loops. So in that case, remember to slip on the protective gear before putting on the skates. Then we move on to the elbow pads, which can also be slipped on or latched on. Watch out and be careful to securely fasten your protective gear so they do not move. If they are too loose, they can shift during a fall, leaving areas exposed, such as the elbow in this case and the knees and the wrists. On the other hand, if they are properly tightened, the elastic bands work correctly and they will cover your skin and save you from scraping it. Next, we move on to the wrist guards, which are very important because they allow us to slide and, above all, protect our wrist in case of a fall. We could fall backwards and with these wrist guards, we'll always be protected. Here, they need to be worn in this way, inserting them correctly. This is very simple. I always fasten them tightly as well. They must be securely fastened one mistake I sometimes see is that people reverse them. The right one on the left and the left one on the right. How can I tell if I've put them on correctly? If I clap my hands together like this, I can hear them click, click. I can hear them click together with the plastic on the inside of the palms. If I have put them on incorrectly, I'll just feel fabric and not hear a click. And now I'm going to put the helmet on. Now, like you have seen, I still haven't put my skates on yet. The skate is always the last thing I put on, especially at the beginning where I'm learning, because otherwise I could risk putting on the skates, standing up and falling over without protective gear on and this isn't very nice. So now it's time to put our skates on. I recommend your first few times you put them on on the grass, just like I am here, so you will avoid sliding. A soft surface allows us to stay in balance easier. To put on skates is simple. It is just like putting on ski boots. Some boots have buckles, some have latches, and also some have laces. Let's continue on with the safety focus. For beginners, it's important to choose the right road. It's true that we are skiers and we do enjoy downhill skiing and making nice turns, but we'll need to learn how to turn and control our speed first. Later on, we'll use different inclines for various types of training, but when we're starting out, we shouldn't rush and go onto a steep hill because that could be dangerous even if we already know how to break. So we should always start out on the flat terrain. What do we need to look out for when choosing our road to train on? The very first thing we need to be aware of is that the road is clean, so without gravel or stones, as they could make a slip or trip. It is important, in case the road is dirty, to have a broom with us so we can clean the road and the ground where we want to practice. Another precaution is to ensure that the space we choose for our training is closed to traffic so that there are no pedestrians or vehicles passing by as it could be dangerous. One last thing, when increasing speed, always make sure that the place where we will stop is completely safe. Check that there is enough space to perform our stop and that it doesn't lead, for example, to gravel, mud, a wall 
or an increase in slope angle as it could compromise our safety and cause us to skate with anxiety and tension. Being skiers, we are used to skiing with poles. So, when it comes to skating, should we use our poles or shouldn't we? Skate to ski is a form of skating that trains us for skiing. So what should we do? The important thing to mention is that to start with and become familiar with skating, we can leave the poles aside. We'll only use them for specific exercises during downhill skating, but even then, not always. We use poles only when we want to simulate skiing or perform exercises to learn pole placement and support, which is where the pole becomes useful. At the same time, we can also use them to learn how to push and provide resistance by our arms, similar to cross-country skiing. So, maneuvering around on the flats can actually be a little bit trickier than some people might think. There's a few things to take into consideration before actually going for your first skate. And what we want to do is we want to find a place that's totally flat. Obviously a parking lot might work very well. This is a nice flat road. But even when we're in very flat terrain, it can be a little bit of a problem because there's always going to be little undulations like this. Just like when you look on a golf green, you can see all of these little undulations and you need to putt accordingly to that. It's the same with skating and right now I'm on a flat part that's actually quite flat but if you find yourself on these tiny little undulating rolls that happen in car parks as well you'll need to know something called a t-stop. So basically what this is is having our feet in a t position like this at 90 degrees from each other and what this is going to do is it's going to keep us from going off in either direction because just like on the snow we can actually start sliding or rolling away when we don't want to. So keeping the feet in a position of a T-stop is going to be really important to know when we come to a stop on the flats. The next thing that we want to be able to do is just kind of turn around on the spot. Being able to turn around on the spot is really important as well. So practicing this, just turning the inside foot where you want to go first. So if I'm turning to the left, I'm going to turn my left foot first a little bit and then I'm just going to try and keep balanced and this is also really important for changing directions when we're starting out. The last thing that we want to be able to do then is just have a little bit of a skate along and we don't really need to be able to push really hard yet but the most important thing is just knowing how to do it and it's very similar to skiing. So if you're a skier this should not be a problem at all. These other little parts where you're moving around without understanding the terrain and stuff. This is a little bit more difficult for skiers, but the skating part is quite similar to skiing. When we're sk skating along on the flats on our skis, it's exactly the same movement as on rollerblades. So as we know, we want to put our feet into a little bit of a V. And when they're in a V, what we can do is just to start off, we can start just like taking one little step and another little step and gradually starting to then make a nice little skate. And we want to keep our weight over it, we want to keep our ankles flexed, we want to have a nice good ankle flexion, bring the knee forward as we go off for a little bit of a push. And this is actually going to be something that we need to know how to do just to move around and then we can come to a stop and that's going to be the next thing. Once we have gained confidence with skating, gliding, and picking up some speed, it is crucial to learn how to brake. There are many types of braking, but the one we use in skate to ski is the heel brake, as it allows us to only use the brake located at the back of the heel, without grinding away the wheels. 
In skate to ski, it is important to have less worn wheels, similar to having well-prepared skis and sharp edges. If we use the sliding brake or the T-stop brake, which causes wear on the wheels, then we'll have to make turns on a slope with worn wheels. We won't have as much grip and we won't experience the pleasure of making smooth turns. Let's try the first stop. This is the heel brake, and it's great because you can brake in a short distance. It's not such a simple brake to learn. First, you need to learn how to balance on one foot and be stable to maintain balance with one leg. In my case, the left one. And then you bring the right foot forward. How do you practice? Essentially, you do it like this. Bend your left leg, slightly lower your hips, and shift it slightly backward while the other leg stretches forward. As you move forward, one leg goes backward and the other goes forward. What happens? As you move forward, the right foot presses and the brake touches the ground. At that moment, it's important not to lower your shoulders, but to control your body well. Keep the rest of your body in an upright position. Push the right foot forward and bring the left foot back and then slightly lower your hips. This is the position for braking. So, the most important thing to move is the supporting leg, which is the left one. Backward while doing this, the right one moves forward. And I press down on the heel. It's important to have good balance with the left leg. Just like in skiing, the basic position is important for both beginners and for those who have followed my previous Technica Pura video. You will know that I define the basic position as a lightning bolt position, and I'll explain how it's done. Essentially, we stand upright and then move our knees forward by bending the ankles. Bring our hips over our heels allowing them to move backward a little bit, feel the glutes elongate, and place the shoulders directly above the knees. This way, I have my lightning bolt position. It's a very important position to avoid falls, especially backward falls. Moreover, on skates, this is facilitated by the fact that the boot's ankle support is much softer, allowing me to bring my knees forward, and this allows me to have more ankle flexion. In the case of falling backwards, if I keep good ankle flexion, it helps me maintain balance. If I have open ankles and I make a mistake and I open up at the hip or the shoulder, I'll risk falling backwards. As you can see, I'm demonstrating on the grass and I would also recommend trying out these postures on the grass before the road. Trying out various skating movements on a soft surface where you won't slip and you can focus your attention to the movement without worrying about falling over. So here I'll try to get into the lightning bolt position again. I can return to the neutral position and then back to a lightning bolt position. I'll show you now on some slippery terrain. As you can see, if I keep good ankle flexion and start moving with my belly, I don't lose balance. If I open my ankles and start moving with my belly and go onto the rear wheels, I start losing balance backward. A good exercise to check if we are in the correct lightning bolt position is to place our hands on our knees and let the shoulders align exactly with the knees. I'll give myself a little push and I'll show you. I assume this position and as you can see, with this position my balance increases significantly.
If we have edges on skis, from the inner edge to the outer edge, we have the same movement on skates, rolling our ankles and knees from one edge to the other edge. We have three of them, a neutral edge, which corresponds to a flat ski, the inner edge and the outer edge. Let me show you with the skates. The neutral edge is where the feet are flat and the wheel is vertical to the ground. The outer edges are these ones on the outside of the feet, while the inner edges, of course, are the opposite. Knowing and being able to use the different edges, the inner edge and the outer edge will allow you to, to make the skate turn really nicely. Neutral edge, outer edge, inner edge. inner edge and outer edges and the opposite. So once you're able to do all of these little maneuvers on the flat, now you're ready to actually start the skate to ski program.